Hey guys, Dan here with You Contribute Games. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick glimpse at what you're going to learn in our Health Manager tutorial series. So what's the ultimate benefit of having a health manager? What does it give you as a game designer? Well, ultimately, it's going to save you time and headaches as you turn your awesome game ideas into killer games, right? Um, so how's it going to save you time and headaches? Well, remember, as a game developer, and especially an indie developer with limited time and resources, we should look for ways to build things that are modularly designed. Think Legos for game designers, right? A bunch of little pieces that we can use over and over and over again to build a bunch of cool stuff. So no matter how you portray health in your game visually, whether it's a plumber who can only get hit once unless he's big, a kid in a green hat with a string of hearts, or an uber MMO boss uh, battle that's going to you know, have 10,000 hit points, having a singular reusable controller for the health value in your game is... And, and how you change that is always a good best practice to implement. I mean, think about it this way. Which is better? Your player and all ten monsters in your game having separate scripts that need to be updated every time you change your mind or one script that's used universally across the board? Right. One script that's used universally across the board. Okie dokie. Well, we know now why we should use a health manager, but let's talk about how we should use a health manager. What functionality is in this manager that allows us to control our player health and does so in a manner that we can reuse it from player to player, uh, over across NPCs, enemies, bosses, and across multiple games? Well, when I think health in a video game, naturally I'm thinking player health, but also enemies, NPCs, everything else. And you want to be able to control you know your player taking damage we want to be able to control our player being able to heal themselves uh, we want to control let's say our player levels up and our hit points go from 100 to 150 and obviously because we leveled up boom our player gets a max health right and then let's say they take damage over time or in turn uh, they cast a regen spell or use a stim pack and they heal over time Right, So those are all functionalities that we want to be able to control on not just our player, but our enemies. And then, like I said, we want to be able to use this from game to game. I mean, we don't have to be talking about you know, a, 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 a shooter game where our player has 100, 150 hit points or you know, some massive MMO boss that has 10,000 hit points. We could be talking about our favorite super plumber boy. You know, think about it this way. And, you know, a game like uh, our favorite Super Plumber Boy, he's got two health, right? And under normal circumstances, he has one of those two health, right? He gets hit by a mushroom. He takes one damage and dies. Well, if he in turn gets a Super Magic Mushroom, He's set to that two maximum value, and then he can take two damage. Boom, first damage, he's little again. Boom, now we got to restart the level, right? So, whether we're no matter what type of game we're talking about, that health manager carries over and allows us to easily tweak the concept of it and, and handle things like MMOs to third party adventure games, side scrollers, you know, card battles, you name it. Being able to control your health with a, an easy manager is going to, to carry over. Um, so if you guys want to play around with this, see how it works and, and just tweak it and test it. We're going to have a link to uh, this demo on our, our website below. And uh, tune in for the next video where we're going to start to dive into the code and you can see how this works, learn to build it yourself, and reuse it in your own games. All right, see you next time, guys. Later.